What's up guys, I'm the Giga Dad, bringing you a top 5 meta loadouts for Warzone Urzikstan featuring Modern Warfare 3 guns. If you don't know who I am, I'm a Call of Duty Battle Royale grinder, part Twitch streamer. I led the world in win percent and was the world first to 100 wins in a row on Warzone 1. And for most of Warzone 2, I led the world in nukes dropped and was iridescent ranked every split. Um, I had the chance to grind the brand new Warzone map using a variety of guns yesterday. Uh, was top 10 on the leaderboards for wins on day one. And am also pretty in tune with what the grinders, wager players, uh, wind farmers, basically what all the elite players run. And we're already starting to get a really good feel for what the meta is. And while obviously it's subject to change, especially once we get data mine testing of weapon stats, all that good stuff, um, and meta kind of further shapes out, um, we do have a, a, a pretty clear understanding of, of some things that are strong that you can definitely use so that you're not going in blind on maybe your first drop into the map. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into it. I, I, with the SMGs, there's one outlier, and then there's at least four uh, decent options. Um, the, the, and so I really, I think it comes down to personal preference between the brand new Modern Warfare 3 guns. Um, I know Aiden was running this striker, uh, just the base striker. And uh, he thinks that it's meta. I, I would highly suggest on your Warzone loadouts, there's a few adjustments that need to be made from a, a multiplayer loadout. So you do pop up on the mini map, which for the majority of players, you do not want to have happen. Uh, if you're an aggressive player, you want to be able to hit flanks while you're trying to uh, finesse a squad. Um, if you're not an aggressive player, you don't want the best teams in the lobby third partying you every time you fight. So I definitely would say stay off the mini-map. Go with the base suppressor, just the Shadow Strike Suppressor S. Uh, it has no cons. Just because the other ones that have pros and cons, the cons tend to outweigh the pros, at least on SMGs. Um, this hand stop basically just gives the best bang for your buck in terms of movement speed and ADS times. Um, also sprint to fire. That's all really important handling stats uh, for your close range fights. And it doesn't really come with too many cons. Uh, you shouldn't be hit firing too much in this game unless you're using a dedicated hit fire build. And those are not meta from what we can tell so far. Hollow points, if you aren't aware, <laughs> are completely broken. Um, I'm almost afraid to even tell people this because even though they've been broken for a long time in Warzone, unless you're in a high ranked lobby, you really don't run into them that much, but uh, they basically stun you while you're getting shot, which is completely debilitating to any player, especially if someone happens to be on mouse and keyboard. Um, it basically ruins any chance that they could win a gunfight against you. So, I mean, for one attachment, I mean, realistically, it's probably the best attachment in the game. So it's pretty, pretty much mandatory. Um, the 48 mag on a 650 RPM SMG is more than enough. I mean, you could push it to 60 if you really want, but this actually does uh, noticeably hurt uh, ADS time. So I would just stick with the 48 mag on this striker. Um, I hate the iron sights, and I tend to like a really clean sight picture over just like 5% ADS buff or whatever of one of these other attachments. Um, but if you don't care, I would drop this for um, probably an... Uh, ADS movement stock. Um, no stock chocks the recoil a little bit too much though. So for this gun in particular, I would probably go with a tat grip just to reduce the sprint to fire timers. Honestly, there's not too many good uh, fourth options, or excuse me, fifth option on the striker. So I mean, I don't think the irons are very good. So I think you're you're good to go. But just throw an optic on this if you want. Um, for a primary. Um, on this fifth best Lodi, the Bass B, True Game Data did some testing. Apparently it's killing in just over 500 milliseconds in the first damage range and then like doesn't fall off too much over range. The TTKs are absurd. Uh, that That's like, 
especially when you counter in uh, factor in like server tick rates i mean that's like beyond the perception reaction time so this bass b it hits really hard um with this build you can get the recoil to be somewhat manageable um luckily the base gun has really high bullet velocity so with just one bullet velocity attachment we're bringing it up to on, almost 900 meters per second on the bullet velocity which is not great for primary but it's decent enough and then we we, we really have to suck it up and, and and not use a suppressor on this gun because the the recoil is just is bad it's not good so i i would run this uh this tide lr8 just because it reduces the horizontal wobble and bounce the most which is i mean that's super important um if you're if you're on a controller uh horizontal recoil is really nice because for vertical you can just pull down on the stick slightly more and you can perfectly control for even like a steep vertical recoil but you can't control for um, like horizontal deviations uh, as easily and on mouse and key the problem is going to be without aim assist all of that side to side balance and visual obfuscation can really can really throw you off target so i think either way you you really want to minimize horizontal recoil and and this is the best attachment for that um this stock just gives you the best bang for your buck out of all the remaining attachments for recoil control 45 mag just because it's the biggest magazine you definitely want to run an optic on this one um on this engine it is not like warzone one where higher zoom optics can reduce the actual recoil plot of the gun uh so you, especially on a gun like this you really want to run shallow zoom or it's just going to be unwieldy and hard to control so i just i go with the mk3 reflector it's personal preference but as you can see the recoil is pretty manageable with this build it's definitely not bad especially for those ttks and realistically even if you miss a, miss a shot or two you're going to kill faster than pretty much every fully auto gun in the game so this this is a good option um it's also something to kind of push your uh, skill limits and like maybe uh you know re really express a skill gap with your recoil control uh as you get used to the gun so this is definitely an, an interesting option um for the next smg the amr9 for me it's really just a like a sniper support it has really good uh uh recoil and it seems to have decent ttks too um maybe it's just that it feels so good due to the low recoil but i think that makes it fit a really good niche as a sniper support and the nice thing too is since it's an smg you get access to hollow points so um even running a sniper you're not going to be sacrificing getting to run hollow points so i think again run run the suppressor run the hollow points um if you're running this with a sniper, definitely put an optic on it. The irons are not good. Run the 50 mag. The 100 mag just guts the handling too much. Um, and, and 50 gets the job done. For some reason, the AMR9 comes with a higher sprint to fire timer um, than other SMGs in Modern Warfare 3. Um, that's a big con of the gun. So you, you, you have to run the Phantom Grip. You can't run the hand stop uh, because this, this reduces sprint to fire by almost 20%. So... That's, that's that's the best option to help bring that sprint to fire time closer in line with the other SMGs. Um, and then you want to run the uh, the one. This is the only sniper rifle that one shots at all ranges. Um, these attachments, the nightfall suppressor and the dang 34 barrel, just give the optimal bullet velocity. Same with the spire point rounds. If you didn't know, they actually help bullet velocity by 35%, whereas high velo only helps by 20%. So that's a big difference. Um, just to help you get those one taps. I hate aim sway on my sniper. I don't like to hold breath. Um, it just helps so much for like my centering as I aim in because sway is applying as I aim in. Um, and, and and so this just helps me be as accurate as possible to get those one shots. If you are not bothered by sway as much as I am, I definitely would recommend dropping the stock and putting this quick bolt on. It, it's it's unfortunate that I can't run it. I just can't tolerate the amount of aim sway uh, without those two other uh, sway reduction attachments. But um, this 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 quick bolt helps the rate of fire by 38%, which is just going to help so much for your damage output in fights, uh, follow up shots, thirsting your downs before they can get to cover. Um, this this is a really good attachment. 
I've even thought about dropping the barrel for it. It's just it's just tough. I'm kind of cramped for attachments for me personally. Um, but this this is definitely like a meta option to run this run this sniper. Um, I like the FFS OLEV laser just because it gives kind of like well-rounded uh, stats, ADS times, uh, reducing the sway. Um, next up is the, so this is the like absolute meta and like CDL like multiplayer. Um, it doesn't seem like it has as broken of a TTK. Uh, we have to keep in mind that the damage values are different um, in uh, Warzone versus multiplayer. However, it definitely shreds people up close. Um, and this clear shot barrel, which is also the meta in the CDL, uh, without hurting ADS time and only slightly hurting your movement speed, uh, massively increases range, recoil control. So this is like a top tier attachment uh, that this gun gets access to. And then uh, same, same as for the other guns, uh, you, you want the suppressor, hand stop, hollow point, um, biggest mag for Warzone. Um, these irons are clean. So I don't I don't really think anyone should need a uh, an optic on this, you know. Even myself. Um, um I, I tend to like to run optics on all my guns, but this this thing is uh it's got really clean irons, so I, I'm 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 happy with those irons. Um so the next primary for this third best meta loadout is the DM56. So this thing is kind of like the DMR uh, 2.0. Um, gosh, I, I think it's a it's a it's a three shot, three or four shot in uh, in Warzone, which is just nutty for how fast the fire rate is. Um, the only downside to it is it runs sniper ammo, so you at times you can get cramped for ammo. So. Basically, I just picked the attachments that maximize bullet velocity um, without hurting the ADS as much. Um, this Bruin Heavy support grip is kind of like the new Commando foregrip from Warzone 1 or FTAC Ripper from Warzone 2. Um, it just really helps bring down that screen shake, visual recoil, side-to-side -side bounce, um, which, is, which is super important. Uh, biggest mag. I mean, for a semi-auto, 40 rounds basically turns this thing into like an LMG with the amount of oppression you can put out. And it just, you, you, you pretty much get the best uh, range TTKs in the game with this thing for for anything that does a one-shot. So it's, 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 it's really, really broken. If you remember the DMR from the Cold War integration, it, it kind of reminds me of that. Um, and, you know, with the fact that we get an extra slot for ammo... The, the fact that it uses sniper ammo hurts a little bit less. So if you like DMRs, definitely give this thing a try. Personally, I hate DMRs. Uh, I just, they're, they don't have that ease of usability, especially when I'm grinding, putting in long hours. So for me, I like something I can just kind of pub stomp and face roll with and not have to think too hard. But um, if you, you know, are super cracked at the game and, and you like using DMRs, definitely give this a chance. You... If you if you are if you are good with it, you will win every fight. <laughs> um, and so I this this next loadout, I would say this is like the absolute meta for like any type of wager player, two v two kill racer. If you're an aggressive player, um, if you're you know a sweaty player, high KD player, uh, this 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 is like the absolute meta. Um, if you didn't know, the WSP Swarm has kind of emerged as like the meta option to be running. I've seen a lot of builds for it. I, I, again, I don't know why people are leaving out suppressor and hollow points. I just I don't think people realize how broken they are. So the build's kind of similar to the other ones where we're running suppressor, hollow points, hand stop, 50 mag. Um, you actually could run 100 mag on this. Like, it doesn't it still has a really good ADS time and movement speed with it. So if you really want to put some firepower down range, you could probably put the 100 round drum on there. I think like most like of the best players though are going to use a 50 mag. It's just it you know, 100 is kind of overkill, but it's also fun. Like I'm probably going to throw the 100 round on it to be honest. Um on this gun, the the recoil is just too shaky, so I kind of have to just suck it up and not run an optic. This, this Fortress Heavy Stock really helps bring down that recoil without, like, nuking its uh, handling. Like, 
Yeah, this thing hurts sprint to fire, but if you'll notice, this still has a 91 millisecond, sub 100 millisecond sprint to fire timer, even with this Fortress Heavy stock. And then you get all these massive recoil reduction benefits. So it's, uh, it's, it, I, I think this is, a, this is a really good attachment for this gun. And you'll be using it mostly at close range anyway. So, I mean, the recoil still looks a little shaky, but um, it's, it's, it's somewhat manageable. I mean, this is another reason why I like, I'm going to probably run the 100 mag on it, because I honestly could just put rounds down range. Like, I mean, I could probably even run a sniper with this thing. Might be hard to pick people off head glitches, but other than that, this, this thing is just a monster. Fa fastest TTKs in class. Um, fast fire rate. The recoil isn't terrible for, for this type of gun. So, this thing is just a beast. Um... <laughs> the if you the DG56 this thing makes the old M16 old AUG um look look look, look tame in comparison like if i remember correctly those things were killing in like 7 800 milliseconds and that was in a 250 hp environment um <laughs> the <laughs> This thing, <laughs> this thing kills that fast in a 300 health environment, and it has less recoil than those guns did. The thing, you, the thing you guys gotta keep in mind is it's like, okay, yeah, the Bass B kills in 600 milliseconds or whatever range. This might kill in seven or 800 milliseconds, but burst guns, there's there's something about them where when you send out two or three volleys toward a player. And they all just kind of smack him at the same time, and with like the server desync and and other things like that, these things can so quickly become meta, and they might not like jump out to you on paper as being meta, but make make no mistake, like they are disgusting. Like this thing is obscenely broken. Um, there's also a setting that I urge you to con to to consider playing around with, um, where if you go over to gameplay settings. And you scroll down to um, manual fire behavior. If you put this on hold, you can literally just hold down the trigger and it will hit the trigger cap on some of the guns, including this DG56. And it almost makes it like a fully auto gun. So there's like no downside to run this. Um, it's just it's just such a nutty, nutty gun. Um, we run this suppressor just because it gives the best overall benefits uh, with the, with the least cons. Um, VTC, VT7 Spirit Fire Suppressor. This is just like the longest barrel. Uh, more bullet velocity, more recoil control, always great. Uh, Bruin Heavy Support Grip, same thing as before. Uh, reducing that visual obfuscation and uh, horizontal recoil. 60 mag. Um, turn this thing into like a mini LMG. And I like to run the SC Holotherm. Like... There's a reason why this thing it was banned in Warzone 2 ranked. Um, it's just an OP. It's an OP site. Beautiful, beautiful site picture. Be easy site acquisition, target acquisition, and it really, it, you know, it, it it doesn't hurt like the recoil too much, or it's not so zoomed in that it makes it hard to manage the shot. As you can see, I mean, this thing is just so easy. I'm hardly even controlling for recoil. Like, look, look, look at the wall plot of this. You guys are going to crack up. Like, it's just nutty. I'm doing no control for recoil. None whatsoever. I, I mean, this is just absurd. Like, it almost recenters itself. I mean, anybody should be able to control for that recoil. So, this is this is what w people... There was a 2v2 tournament yesterday to kick off the new map, and th this is what people were running. Um, if you don't like the Holotherm, other optics I could recommend to you guys would be this Corio Eagle's Eye. This is what a lot of people are running. It's kind of like shaping up to be like the meta. Um, I also really like this MK3 Blue Dot if you don't like to run zoomed optics. So now that I've showed you guys like the absolute meta that is shaping, um, either the DG56 for just like usability, ease of use, or the DM56 for like crackheads or a one-shot sniper paired with your SMG of choice. Um, seems like the swarm is shaping up to be like the best in class for now. Uh, I want to show you guys my favorite loadout. This is the Giga Chad Lodi right here, baby. 
Um, the striker nine, God, it just feels so cracked in my hands. Like the movement, um, it just it just hits that sweet spot of a fast fire rate, but not so fast that I'm chewing through a mag or making the recoil hard to control, um, but not too slow. Or if like I miss a shot, I don't get like a decent TTK still. Um, we're proccing those hollow points. Um, it seems to have decent damage ranges, a competitive TTK. It's stray feels really cracked out. Um, and it's just, oh, it's just a smooth gun. I just love it. It just feels so good. By far my, this is my baby right here. We love the Striker 9. Um, and I pair this with the, uh, the Pulam Yacht 762. So I tried this without the bullpup conversion and it's a pea shooter. It does not have a fast enough CTK, at least not in this current environment where we have broken guns. Uh, it was non-competitive. However, with this bullpup conversion kick, it, it absolutely puts people down. Um, th this attachment is insane to me. Absolutely broken. It has According to their stats, it has no impact on the damage values while being just a straight buff to damage ranges and rate fire. Not to mention also massively reduces recoil, all the handling stats. Like This thing actually handles quicker than a lot of the ARs when you put this conversion on. The only downside is the reload at this point. So it's just a nutty gun. Um show you guys the recoil like it, it, it it's so easy to control there's a little bit of like visual warping on the optic so if that bothers you just run a low zoom um but other than that i mean this thing is just a beast if you do the wall plot on it it will look like it has a lot of vertical recoil um you just gotta keep in mind it is even with the conversion kit it's still a slow rate of fire so yeah if you just shoot a wall it looks like it's a you know it's a really tall wall plot for the recoil, but um, it takes it it takes a long time for it to climb like that because the the so the climb rate will be low because the fire rate is low if that makes sense. Um, like I'll show you guys what the climb rate looks like if we just do like a wall plot. Let's see, That's, that is not too bad. So it looks like it's going up for forever, but. We can easily manage that. I'm, I'm hardly pulling down on the controller. And pretty much perfectly controlling for that recoil. So, th this thing is just a beast. The TTKs are monstrous. The handling is really good. The only downside is reload. Um, luckily, the Striker 9 for me is a versatile SMG. So, I can I can kind of like use that in a pinch if I get stuck uh, reloading. Um, they also added uh, graded uh, reload cancels to Warzone. So if you don't know what that means, basically um, there's stages to a reload where when you cancel the reload if you need to, the 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 re the reload will be staged at that point if you don't like start firing your gun or something. So it's not uh, it's not too bad to have to cancel a reload and switch to another gun and then go back to it and finish up the reload. Um, hu huge huge change that really buffs LMGs. Um, just as like a little bonus, I want to give you guys the optimal perk package and kind of walk through it really quick. Um, just to make sure you guys loadouts are looking good. Um, EOD and Slide of Hand are by far best in class here. You're going to see some crackheads running double time um, over, I guess, over EOD. That's going to get you killed, especially since they buff frag grenades and Semtexes. <laughs> You don't want to be taking 240 damage from Semtexes or Frags, like, especially when people can easily spam them, um, which we'll talk about on re on resupply. Um, so I, I really recommend EOD and Slide of Hand. Uh, everything else is just kind of a niche thing that just can't really compete with the value those perks bring. Uh, perks 1 and 2 come from the same set of perks. Perk 3, you're basically picking between Tempered and Resupply. The rest of these are all kind of niche. Um, I like resupply. Uh, there's, so there's a new mechanic where, say, you're throwing Semtexes. If you have uh, Semtexes in your backpack, they auto replenish um, into your into your uh, inventory uh, to throw them. So you don't even have to go into your backpack uh, to equip them again. 
So make sure you're stowing throwables. This is it's broken. <laughs> Tempered is really good just to kind of when you're finessing uh, a gunfight and like maybe popping plate in or or two um, as you're like snaking resetting a fight um, can really can really add up and help you win some close gunfights or pull off some like um, 1v2s 1v3s or even 1v4s so um, you know if you if you have teammates that are helping keeping you replenished or if you're you're good about getting muni boxes. Um, that sort of thing, then you could definitely run tempered. Um, but but re I think resupply for most players would, will be meta just because of how abusable it is. If you can't be asked to abuse that, um, then just throw tempered on. Like you might not, you know, depending on your playstyle, you might not immediately notice it, but it's definitely helping you. So either one of those. Um, for perk four, I think bird's eye and high alert are still king. They nerfed ghost, or you have to be moving. Which, I mean, that's definitely how it should be. Um, the nice thing about Bird's Eye, I'll say as well, they fixed Ghost Vests so that it applies like the actual Ghost perk instead of like the super Ghost perk that can't even be detected by Bird's Eye. So Bird's Eye is really strong right now. It just gives you the confidence that there's no Ghosted Rats or, uh, you know, like maybe a sweaty team that decides to run Ghost to help them flank, like creeping up on you. So I think Bird's Eye just gives like the most value, but... Sometimes uh, teams will make the argument that, hey, you only need one player with good comms on bird's eye. So if that's the case, I would just throw high alert on. Um, just seems, you know, the rest of these, uh, they're, they're kind of niche. That I just don't think they hit the value of bird's eye or high alert. Um, so th this is what I'm running with. EOD, sleight of hand, resupply, bird's eye. All right, guys, I am going to be wind grinding. Um, hopefully I'll be top 10 uh I'll maintain top 10 and if not climb by the end of, the t of today um, and, and we'll keep pushing we'll keep pushing wins there's there's no nukes right now there's no ranked right now so I'm gonna be win grinding so pull up to my twitch live stream I'm the giga dad on everything um, you know I'm kind of new to the YouTube long-form content scene um, so definitely give me some feedback down in the comments let me know what you liked about uh, this video what you think I could improve on and I appreciate y'all I'll catch you on the next one peace